Hello everyone. I wanted to talk about all the different types of uh, soilless systems that exist uh, within this industry. Mostly because personally I didn't know all these types existed when I started working with this. Considering all the different types of nutrient sources uh, that one can use for soilless cultivation, I think it's uh, important to at least share my personal opinion on it on how I see the different types and how they are divided between them. So starting with the first one, which would be soilless cultivation, actually just means that you don't use soil. Soil cultivation or traditional agriculture, uh, more rarely known as geoponics, just means that, that you use soil and in the soil you have the nutrients and when you irrigate the nutrients or you add water to them, this allows the plants to, to absorb the nutrients through the water phase. Then you have the soilless cultivation technique, and I would really divide these in two main categories, which would be mineral hydroponics and organic hydroponics. And mineral hydroponics is really the, the type that most people associate with the word hydroponics itself. Um, but I want to make the distinction of adding specifically the mineral parts so that you can understand that this type of hydroponics requires these salts that are mined. So when you want to create or grow plants in the mineral hydroponic system, the source of the nutrients come from these minerals that are mined from the earth, transported, refined, mixed into solution, and then added. Uh, so there is a clear environmental cost in, in using these sort of minerals. But on the other hand, you got extreme precision in, in just about the type of solution you can make. You can target your solution for the type of specific plant, the weather, you can even target it for different stages of the plant growth to really optimize the production that you get out of it. But like I said, there is a clear environmental cost with the energy and fossil fuels required for processing and extracting all of this uh, nutrients from the earth. And as a stark contrast to that, I would place then organic hydroponics, which not so much focuses on extracting these raw minerals from the earth, but so much as really reusing or converting existing nutrients that are in one form and otherwise unavailable to plants, and thus converting it into an available form. And in this category, the biggest by far I would place is aquaponics, of course, using fish feed as a source of nutrients to then produce fish waste, which then gets converted into soluble nutrients for the plants to absorb. But of course, aquaponics itself is not a guarantee that the process is more sustainable. Um, there is a chance that the fish feed or the way the fish feed is produced also entails a very big environmental cost. Um, the fishing of the oceans, the transport, the processing of the fish that serves as fish feed for the fish in the land. All of those things can contribute to very big environmental footprint. Then this term is not very common, but or I would nonetheless focus on it since it it really shows, in my opinion, the the goal that we that organic hydroponics represents. So bioponics, I would say, is any nutrient solution that's that's organic in nature. So it means it's not really it's derived from a natural process, and then you pass it through a natural natural process, some sort of biological reaction, and from then you derive the nutrients that you can use for your plants. So so there are commercial organic solutions of hydroponics, and I would uh, I would include these in the bioponics section, but also more exotic things like using liquid uh, slurry from from biogas production, for example, or something I have used as well, which is when you vermicompost, that is when you compost food waste using worms, and sometimes you have a leftover liquid, that liquid itself can be used to produce crops. So that could be a form of bioponics. So there's many different types, potentially limitless types of solutions that are organic in nature in this way. They are more sustainable. You don't have to mine in that sense uh, that you could use to grow plants. And lastly, I would incorporate this uh, more or less emerging field, I would say, of anthroponics, or sometimes known as peaponics. Peaponics, I would say, is really a subset of the wider anthroponics. Anthroponics, of course, means that it's derived from human, from human waste in this case. So anthroponic could really entail the combined type 1 and type 2 human waste, uh, which, of course, has certain liabilities and dangers associated with it. Whereas peaponics is just a subset of that, where it just uses the 
the human urine part. So it's much more user-friendly and tolerable and less dangerous in terms of uh, bacteria that might be harmful for us. And of course, within these uh, peponics and anthroponics, there's many different other ways to be explored and there's a lot of research to be done. But I think this gives a good summary for people to understand that all of these different types of soilless cultivation techniques have very different advantages to each other. So on the one end, you can have very precise scientific production that really maximizes the output and you can very easily calculate and automate all the steps. And on the other hand, you have more complex systems, sometimes involving ecosystems, like in the case of aquaponics, which is sometimes involving very complex biological reactions, as is the case with bioponics and anthroponics, where, especially in the case of anthroponics, you really get the advantage of using the organic system, but on the other hand, you have other issues that you have to deal with so as to have a very safe food production system. And of course, in my opinion, we're not really there yet for anthroponics. Uh, hopefully, we will never really need to use this sort of system because that would mean all the previous systems have become uh, very expensive or very troublesome in their own right, and we've left to, to, to basically deal with the only option, which is to use our own waste. So hopefully, that will always be a backup in my, in my vision. And instead, we can focus on the other organic forms of hydroponics and really explore them and try to compensate, in a way, the downsides of mineral hydroponics by trying to reuse or incorporate back into the bigger cycle of nutrients uh, waste that, in general, would go to waste. So I hope you found this video somewhat informative, and I'm sorry if I was ranting a bit too much, but hopefully you got a better idea of all these different types of soilless cultivation, and you can start your search from there and decide which one is more uh, interesting for you or which one is just easier for you to start with. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.